Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the names of the winners in the first big jingle contest, and we're going to announce them later in this program. So stay tuned while new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, you aren't going to let them get away. I don't have any choice, Patsy. You bet you haven't. You got your name on that confession, sister? Yes. Here it is. Give it to me. I have to sign it, too. Oh, brother, wait till this story gets around town. Nick Carter lets a killer get away. And even finishes the car the killer escapes in. (laughs) Ha-ha! It'll be the biggest laugh of the year. And now, the case of the absent clue. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. As a good businessman... Jeff Greeley never overlooks the chance to put his merchandise in a new and promising location. The merchandise in this case is little slips of paper with numbers on them. They sell for whatever you want to pay, from a nickel on up. And the new location Jeff has in mind is a small suburban candy store owned by Paul Elliott and his wife Ruth. Right now, Jeff is giving the Elliotts a sales talk. Your cut ought to double the profits on this joint, Mr. Elliott. You'll get a big play from the kids at that school down the street. Listen, the numbers game is a racket. When I sink so low that I have to cheat school kids out of nickels and dimes and start them gambling with their lunch money... Elliot, you've got the only place in this neighborhood that fits in with my plans. Then you'll have to change your plans. There was another guy that didn't want to cooperate. Somebody busted all his plate glass windows one night. You can't scare me. The other guy wasn't scared either. It wasn't until after a couple of guys slugged him that he decided to play ball with us. Paul, phone for the police. Don't bother, Elliot. I'm going. But I'll call around again in a couple of days. Maybe you'll change your mind. That's the place, Barney. Slow down till I heave this brick. Easy now. A bullseye. Now step on it. Anything interesting in the mail, Nick? No, not so far, Patsy. Say, what have you got there? A new fountain pen? Oh, no. It's one of those tear gas guns that looks like a fountain pen. Sergeant Matheson gave it to me. Oh, he did? Uh-huh. That yeah, was nice of him, wasn't it? Yeah, sort of handy to have in your purse, don't you think? Uh, sort of dangerous, if you ask me. Tear gas is nothing to fool with. Oh, Nick. Well, what do you know? What is it? This letter. It's from a fellow I haven't heard of since we were kids. Paul Elliott. Oh, I thought it was a case. And maybe. You know who Jeff Greeley is? Small-time racketeer, isn't he? Yeah, running a numbers game in the suburbs now. Oh? And a crooked one at that. Hmm. Huh. He's trying to strong-arm Paul into peddling the number slips for him. Strong-arming? How? Well, Paul and his wife have a small confectionery store out in Beechwood. Yeah? The front window's been smashed twice, and Greeley's warned him that next time it'll be a lot more serious unless Paul gives in. Oh, well, can't the police do anything? Not without proof. And Greeley's too smart to let him get anything on him. Hmm. You know, I think I'll drive out there this evening and talk it over with Paul. Oh, you can't go tonight, Nick. Oh, why not? Because tonight's the annual banquet of the downtown boys' club. And you're the guest of honor. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, I'll go afterwards then. And I want to put this off, Betsy. No telling when Greeley will pay Paul another visit. That's the store there on the right. The one the two men are coming out of? Mm-hmm. Well, you can park right behind that green sedan that the men are getting into. Oh, yeah, no. Hey, by George. Huh? The one with the yellow gloves. That was Jeff Greeley. Jeff Greeley? What? Do you think we ought to follow them? 
No, not now. I, I want to see what's happened inside the shop. Okay. Come on. Well, at least they haven't thrown any bombs or smashed another window. That's right. Well, I'm worried. Hmm? Paul said Greeley promised him the next time it'd be more serious. Help! Please help me! Yes, what is it? Oh, my, my husband, he, he's hurt. Are you Mrs. Elliot? Yes, I, my husband, he, he's in the back there. Please do something. I'll go, Patsy. You stay here with her. Yes. Oh, Mrs. Elliot, what happened? Those men, the two that just left, they hit him. Now, they... don't worry. Everything will be all right. How is he, Nick? Shall I call an ambulance? No. That won't be necessary. You mean he's, he's all right? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Elliot. Paul's dead. Oh. Dead? Oh, Nick, she's fainted. Oh, I shouldn't have broken the news to her so abruptly. Oh. Here, Patsy, take care of her. I'll call Maddie and tell her to put out a general alarm for Jeff Greeley on a charge of murder. All right, the police will be here in a few minutes, Patsy. How is she? Still unconscious, Nick. I just dipped my handkerchief in cold water at the soda fountain. I'll wipe her face with it. You've got it smeared with makeup. Oh, no, I won't. She isn't wearing any. You mean that peaches and cream effect is natural? Of course it is. Some women are lucky. Oh, she's coming out of it. Oh, oh, oh. How do you feel, Mrs. Elliot? Uh, who are you? My name's Carter. I'm a private investigator. I used to know Paul years ago. Oh, you said... You said Paul was... Please, Mrs. Elliot, try to tell us what happened. Oh, Paul. Paul and I stayed late to unpack some new stock. He was opening the crates in the back room, and, and I was in the storeroom when Jeff Creeley and that other man came in. How long ago was that? Oh, it was only a few minutes ago. I heard Paul quarreling with him, and, and the sound of a fight in the... Yes? I came out of the storeroom just in time to see... to see Creeley. The one who was wearing yellow gloves? Yes, that's him. He picked up the crowbar Paul had been using to open the crates, and... And he hit him with it. Did they see you? No, I don't think so. When Paul fell, they, they ran out the front way. Yes, we saw them leave as we drove up. <laughs> no, he did. Oh, Paul. Try to control yourself, oh, Mrs. Elliot, please. I used to nag him, but he didn't make more money. But oh. it was only because I loved him and wanted to be proud of it. Of course it was. And now... Now it's too late. Mrs. Elliot, if you can identify Paul's killers... I can. I saw them kill him. And I'll never rest until those men are in the electric chair. Al, did you find anything, Nick? No, no, Matty. This ledger of Greeley's is the only thing in the whole apartment. Yeah, there's plenty of evidence in it to convict Greeley of running a numbers racket, but that ain't important now. Hey, wait. Here's an interesting item. What? October 17th. Farm, $18,375. Oh, can you imagine a bright likes character like Jeff Greeley buying a farm? What would he do with a farm? <laughs> Use it as a hideout, and I'll bet that's where he is right now. Hey, you're probably right, Nick. But we don't know where this farm is located. If he bought it for a hideout, the chances are it ain't even in his name. Well, some of his friends might know, if we could get them to talk. Yeah, maybe. We'll round up a few of them and try anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, how about the medical examiner's report, Matty? Bruises, contusions, cut on the left eye. Oh, they must have beaten him pretty badly. And then finished him off with a crowbar. Oh, it's going to be a pleasure to get my hands on those guys. I don't suppose there were any fingerprints on the crowbar, Sergeant. Huh? No, Patsy, not a single one. What? Well, why should there be, Nick? Greeley was wearing gloves. That's right. Greeley was wearing yellow gloves. Well, now, look, we don't need a fingerprint. Mrs. Elliott's testimony will be enough to convict those two rats. Yeah, but if anything happened to her, you wouldn't have any case at all against Greeley. Nothing is going to happen, Patsy. We got her in a downtown hotel under an assumed name. Where? She's registered at the Kemble Arms on East 49th Street under the name of Mrs. Anna Davis. Yes? Mrs. Elliot? No, no, I... My name's Anna Davis. <laughs> I know, Mrs. Elliot. It's all right. I'm William Jeffords from the district attorney's office. Oh, oh I didn't know. 
There have been a couple of new developments in the case, Mrs. Elliott, and the D.A. wants to see you in his office right away. All right. Just a minute. I'll get my... This is the car, Mrs. Elliott. Here, I'll open the door. Thank you. I... Man, it's a wheel. That's Jeff Greeley. Get in there. <laughs> nice work, Eddie. Now, you keep her quiet back there. I got some driving to do. Swiftly, Jeff Greeley heads the car toward his upstate hideout. While in the back seat, struggling helplessly, is the woman whose story could send him to the electric chair, if she lives to tell it. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the absent clue. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Jeff Greeley, racketeer and gangster, has kidnapped Ruth Elliott, the murdered man's wife, and the only person who could testify that he killed Paul Elliott. At headquarters, Nick and Matty have just learned that Mrs. Elliott has disappeared from the downtown hotel where they had her registered under an assumed name. Greeley did this, Nick. It's got to be Greeley. The doorman at the hotel saw two men force her into a car, but they got away before he could call a cop. Oh, there's no use getting excited, Matty. Oh, how long do you think Greeley is going to let her live, knowing her story will send him to the chair? But how do they find out where she was, Sergeant? I checked that, Patsy. They yeah. used the old registered letter gift. Huh? The man went to Mrs. Elliott's apartment with a letter she had to sign for personally, and the superintendent told him where she was. The superintendent? But how did he know? I told her not to let anybody know. He said that after she found what hotel we put her in, she called him and gave him the address in case of an emergency. Well, we've sure got the emergency. Now, you can say that again. We've got to work fast. Oh, sure, sure. But what do we work on? The location of that hideout Greeley has in the country. Nick, we've been working on that and got exactly nowhere. Matty, Greeley's brother would know where it is if anybody would. Nick, we questioned him for over an hour this morning. All right, then. We're going to question him some more. Okay, okay. I'll have him brought up. But I tell you, it's no use, Nick. Pete Greeley's dumb, but he's plenty tough. Okay, it's up to us to be just a little bit tougher. <laughs> Will you guys lay off of me? I tell you, I don't know nothing. Don't give me that, Pete. Your brother Jeff bought a farm last October, and you know it. Uh, Listen, nuts. you lame brain stumble bum. I'm going to make you tell me where that farm is if it takes me from now until Christmas. I tell you, I never heard of no farm. Hey, wait, 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 Matty. Just had an idea. Yeah? We can find where that farm is. By consulting the state registrar of deeds. Well, how will that help if he bought it under a different name? Well, we know the farm was bought on October 17th and that he paid $18,375 for it. So what? So we checked the records. It's not likely that more than one farm changed hands for that exact price on that particular day. Hey, Nick, you got something there. Yeah, Matty, we'll have the exact location of that farm inside of four hours. Yeah. Well, what about Pete here? You can't hold me. I ain't done nothing. Why, you No, 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 no. Wait, Matty. You may as well let him go. Okay, okay. But I hope you come back to see us, Pete, when you can stay for a long, long time. Hey! I want to send a telegram. Well, <laughs> that's what we're in business for. Uh, do you have it written out? Yeah, 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 right here. And it's got to go fast, see? Naturally. Our telegram's always... Uh, what is this first word? James, J-A-M-S. It's a guy's name. Oh, oh yes, of course. James, uh, Crane, is it? That's Graham. What's the matter, stupid? Can't you read? Well, uh, I... Here, here, here. Give me it. I'll read it to you. I don't want no mistakes. Uh, yes, that would be best. Uh, James Graham, Rural Route 6, Box 124. Rural Route? Oh, there'll be an extra charge for messenger service, uh, unless they have a phone. Okay, stupid. So send a messenger. They got no phone. Uh, Horton's Grove, New York. Dear James, your friends from downtown are coming up to see you. Never mind that, Pete. I'll take that. Carter, where'd you come? I've been trailing you ever since you left headquarters. 
Why do you think we let you go? Uh, just a moment. I'll have to have that paper. Forget it. I'm going to deliver this message personally. Is this the place? This is it. Oh. But where's Greeley's car? Do you suppose he didn't come here after all? Somebody's been here. Look at those tire tracks. Then if he's gone, we're too late. No harm in looking around. Better stand to one side. Okay. We're going to knock on the door. We might get bullets for an answer. Well, be careful, Nick. Do you hear anything? Not a sound. Is it locked? Yeah, and I'm going to break it in. Those tire tracks prove they had some reason for coming here. And it may have been to, to dispose of a body. Oh, Nick, I hope not. Here it goes. Now, let's see what we can find in here. Good. But, listen. Do you hear that? Yes. Seems to be from this room over here. Yes. Nick, it's Mrs. Elliot, bound and gagged. And she's alive. Oh, thank heavens. You untie the gag, Patsy, while I get these ropes off her hands and feet. Right, Nick. Uh, There you are, Mrs. Elliot. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm all right. I... I heard your voices now. I started pounding my heels on the floor. That's the tapping we heard. All right, now you're loose. Tell me, did Jeff Greeley bring you here? Yes, he and two other men. They said they were going to kill me. Where are they now? I heard them say something about going into town for cigarettes. Well, then we better hurry. We've got to get away before they come back. Yeah. What? What's your rush? Oh. Really? You can all relax now, because you're not going nowhere till I say so. Jeff Greeley stands in the doorway, a revolver in his hand. And it appears that instead of rescuing Ruth Elliott, Nick and Patsy are themselves caught in the same trap. We'll see what happens in just a minute. Now for the conclusion of the case of the absent clue, today's adventure with Nick Carter. Nick and Patsy found Ruth Elliott bound and gagged in the deserted farmhouse where she had been taken by Jeff Greeley. But just as they were about to leave... Greeley appeared in the doorway, a revolver in his hand. You can all relax now, because you're not going nowhere. You got back from town with those cigarettes in a hurry, didn't you, Greeley? I never went. Barney and Eddie took the car, and I stayed here to keep an eye on things. That was smart. Now keep on being smart and put away that gun. I'll put it away. After I make sure that you three ain't going to talk now or ever. Nobody's going to get away with framing me. Framing you? Yeah. If I fry, it won't be for something I didn't do. Well, if that's all that's worrying you, Greeley, you can put that gun back in your pocket. I know you didn't kill Paul Elliott. What's that? He did. He did. I saw him. No, Mrs. Elliott. You killed your husband. She did? It's a lie. That's why you kidnapped her, isn't it, Greeley? Why, sure. I've been trying to make her tell the truth so that I'd be cleared. I can understand that. What chance would I have in a court when it's my word against hers? You wouldn't have any chance. Unless you had a confession from her, signed and witnessed. Yeah, and that's what I've been trying to get. And I'll get it, too, or else. I won't do it. I won't. He can kill me first. I see your point, Mrs. Elliot. You'd rather be shot than go through a trial and die in the electric chair. You can't prove a thing, any of you. Look, Mrs. Elliot, how about this? If you did sign such a confession, and Patsy and I witnessed it... Greeley might be willing to let you take my car and get away. Well, why not? I'll hold Carter and the girl here long enough for you to get clear out of the country. No, I didn't do it. It's your only chance, Mrs. Elliot. You ain't kidding. I... You really keep him here long enough for me to get out of the country. Yeah, and I'll give you enough dough to do it with. All I want is to clear myself. Well, all right, I'll do it. Good. Now, here, I got a pencil. And she can use the paper and Patsy's notebook to write the confession out. Oh, but Nick, you're not going to let her go. Not really. Do you see any other choice? No, but... Then give her the notebook. Oh, Nick, you must be... Patsy. Oh, here. Now, write as I dictate, Mrs. Elliot. Go ahead. I hereby confess that I killed my husband, Paul Elliot, and that Jeff Greeley is completely innocent. Now, sign it. There. Sign your name as witness, Patsy. Well, uh... 
All right. You... You are going to keep him here, aren't you? You bet I am, but not for your sake, sister. I just want everyone to know that somebody finally got the best of Nick Carter. What do I do with this, Nick, now that I've signed it? Well, hand me the notebook and pencil. I have to witness it, too. Wait till it gets around town that Nick Carter let a killer get away and even finished it with a car to get away in. <laughs> It'll be the biggest laugh of the year. Better than stopping a bullet, though. Oh, I broke the point on this pencil. Uh, Patsy, let me have your fountain pen. My fountain? Yes, you have it in your purse, haven't you? Oh, oh yes, yes, of course, Nick. Hold it, sister. What? What's the matter? Just toss that purse over here, baby. I'll get that fountain pen for him. Oh, all right. Here. That's a girl. I just want to make sure you didn't pull any tricks. Here's the pen, Carter. Oh, you know I wouldn't try any tricks at a smart boy like you, Jeff. Oh, there's no ink in this pen. Huh? I'm afraid I'll have to use tear gas. <laughs> All right, let go of the gun, really. Let go. I've got the confession <laughs> bit. Give me Don't move, Mrs. Elliot. Yes, I don't know you are. You keep your hands up, too, Greeley. Oh, Nick, I guess. Go on, through the door, Greeley. <coughs> we'll wait for the rest of your gang out where there's some fresh air. <laughs> Nick, with that confession, Mrs. Elliott's sign of held good in court? Oh, not for a minute, Patsy. It was obtained under duress. But the one she signed when we got her to headquarters will hold good anywhere, especially with the proof we have to present to a jury. And I suppose that clears Jeff Greeley completely. Clears him of the murder charge, but he still faces a sentence for extortion, assault and battery, carrying a gun, operating the numbers racket, and kidnapping. Golly. It's going to be a good many years till he'll be a free man again. How did you know he didn't kill Elliot? I didn't know. Hmm? But I began to wonder when Mrs. Elliot overdid the heartbroken wife act by pulling that phony faint. Phony? Why, it looked perfectly real to me. Ah, but it wasn't, though. When you faint, Patsy, the blood rushes from the head and you become very, very pale. Oh, so that's why you were surprised that her makeup didn't come off when I bathed her face. Mm Mm-hmm. She still had that peaches and cream expression. But that wasn't any reason to accuse her of murder. You must have had another clue. I did. A clue that wasn't there. A clue that wasn't... Oh, what do you mean? Remember, there weren't any fingerprints on the crowbar that Paul Elliott was killed with? Well, why should there be any? Greeley was wearing gloves. True enough, but Elliott had been working with a crowbar, and he wasn't wearing gloves. His prints should have been all over it. And since they weren't, I knew somebody must have wiped them off. And it wouldn't have been Greeley because he was wearing gloves anyway. Right. So it had to be Mrs. Elliott. Nobody else was there. You mean that after Greeley and the other man came in the store and beat up her husband, she saw her chance to murder him and put the blame on them? According to her confession, they left Paul lying on the floor unconscious, which gave her a perfect opportunity. But why? What motive did she have? Money. She killed him for money? Yes. Paul had a lot of insurance. Oh. And they hadn't been getting along for a couple of years, so she thought she saw a chance to commit the perfect murder. (laughs) Well, Nick, that little tear gas gun of mine certainly came in handy, didn't it? It certainly did. Lucky for us that Jeff didn't take a closer look and see that it really wasn't a fountain pen. I guess you're glad now that I had it in my purse, huh? I still say it's a dangerous thing to carry. But it isn't. Look, Nick. Unless you push the little button here. <laughs> Patsy, you little idiot. How did I know it would go off? Oh, Nick, open a window or something. Quick. <laughs> and now... The winners of the four 1948 Super Deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedans in the first new post-war old Dutch cleanser contest, which closed February 28th. Nick, suppose you do the honors. I'll be glad to, Mike. These folks have won themselves a brand new Super Deluxe Ford V8 four-door sedan. Mrs. L.J. Elman of Route 1, Odessa, Florida. Mrs. J.J. Bartlett of 1705 Summit View Avenue, Yakima, Washington. Mrs. H.E. Brower of 16618 South Woodruff Avenue, Bellflower, California. And Mrs. M.L. Burns 
of 203 Wilmot Avenue, Bridgeport 7, Connecticut. My only regret is that I can't award these Fords in person. I'd certainly like to see the smiles that wreathe the happy faces of these winners. So would I, Nick. And to all these Ford and other prize winners, congratulations. We'll have more winners next week, so be sure to listen. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The Girl Scouts, 36 years old this week, have pledged themselves to send 100,000 kits of clothing to destitute children overseas. To help in this project, call your local Girl Scout office. This is Michael Fitzmaurice speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.